Hello and welcome back, everybody. We are getting geared up for game two. Before we do that, though, we do want to just give you a quick bracket update. We have one other quarterfinal match in the books already as Slimes Temp is able to take down Vanguardian in game one over there as well. So shaping up to potentially be Slimes Temp's first professors in the semifinals, but you can never count either of these other two teams out. No, you definitely can not. And uh, as we just saw, Team Faded, uh, they had a couple of different issues going around in their game, uh, but not issues that are hard to, uh, well, impossible to overcome. I would say hard, definitely not impossible to overcome. Uh, and a very big one, of course, that we always start out with is how did their draft go? Uh, and their draft had some merit to it, but I do think there were a couple of holes into it or in terms of uh, strategy versus what professors were, were pulling out. So let's see if they can fix that in draft number two. I agree with that. I do think that they need to be looking for a little bit more of a front line than just the Camara Crunch and the Narbash as well. Two of those being Bruisers and Richter being on the support role, not necessarily able to get as tanky as some of those uh, people that would be getting the gold able to move into those items a little bit faster than the Richter is able to. I'd also really like to see Sneaks either try to match that pressure that EDOC put in to the duo lane or potentially move that into the other lanes and try to win through Dabble. But it looks like we are going to get into the picks and bans right away. It does look like Team Faded, after losing, has decided to be first pick once again. So it'll be interesting to see which a ban and what sort of strategy they decide to implement for this game here. Uh, it does seem like they're going to go for second pick. Professor yeah, banned Muriel second. from the get-go. So at least uh, Muriel cannot get banned. It cannot get picked once again in this game. Are they going to go for the steal again? Or are they going to go for maybe a bit of a, more of a targeted ban versus a specific player that was doing fairly well? They are going to yeah. go for the Rampage indeed. Yeah, I mean, the Rampage stealing uh, the first Fangtooth, coming in for the Ore Prime as well. Obviously didn't quite steal that one. Uh, but there was a lot of threat coming out of that one. Yeah, Edoc was uh, really, really putting the pressure down onto them with that Rampage. They're going to want to see if he can play another champion as well. I got a small feeling that Edoc yep. definitely can, but it'll be interesting to see who they prioritize. Uh, maybe they go jungle here with their first rotation with that Rampage being banned out by Team Faded here. There we do see the steal instantly from the Professor. is not banned this time, of course, so it's going to get picked up. Going to be Grux Gideon from Team Faded this time around, so they are just sort of flipping the script on the professor seeing uh putting them in a corner where they have to pick something else richter coming out from them and uh, it's gonna go very far back and forth gonna you know, richter and severog if I'm not mistaken so we're getting richter through and, it and it's gonna severog. be yeah that yeah, is correct very so, tanky yeah that's exactly the word i was gonna use is beef this is a beefy comp coming out of professor so far a uh, really good team fight synergy with the rector and the steel as well uh, Team Faded is going to follow that up with the Narbash Murdoch. So picking their duo lane there for Zihi and Corpse. Uh, we saw a lot of success from the Narbash on uh, Crazy Fool's side, the opposite side of the map last game. They're going to try to mimic that for themselves. And Professor yeah, is going to pick uh, up Drongo Gadget. I was going to say, like, the only thing that's really missing from that Faded lineup is that, uh, is, is that uh, Rampage. So they're going to have to find a different answer for that. They're going to go back to their Crunch uh probably means it's going to be grux in the jungle and crunch on the offlane uh, yeah i assumed surprised i assume that grux was a flex pick when they had locked it in right away a lot of times yeah. you can see him go either offlane or jungle pretty successful in both a little bit of a shorter range on his dash so the gangs are a teeny bit harder but with that pull as well really gives them the opportunity to walk into a lane and really mess it up for the enemy a lot of crowd control on grux yeah, a little bit of a question mark what the professor is going to throw in the jungle. Uh, it might very well be the steal, uh, but there is an opportunity to go with either uh, the Richter or the Severog as well, depending on what you want to throw in your support. Uh, it, there there are some flex options, uh, but there is is a good, uh, good chance for that. Something I've seen a lot of from these overprime teams and a lot of these like higher echelon teams is the Richter jungle. I watched um, a game the other day where a player named Appy Picker, I'm sure that you guys are all familiar with Appy Picker. If you guys uh, are familiar with the scene, he absolutely tore a team apart with Richter jungle. Really, really, really good hooks, really big gank pressure. And the big part about Richter, as it is in any jungler, is knowing where to be and when to be there. And then Richter is incredibly impactful. We saw the impact that IDOC had on the last game 
we can expect him to have a similar one if they're putting him on either Steel or Richter in this match. Yeah, very much going to be the case. And of course, uh, with the picks and the bans being done, we can look a little bit about what the general lineup for these teams is going to be. A lot more team fight this time around for Team Faded, just because of the Narbash and the Gideon being around. Uh, nothing to scoff at for the professors. I mean, just Steel alone will be able to provide plenty of lockdown. He definitely will be. The Severog also gives them a great disengage tool if that is what they are looking to do. Doesn't necessarily have an ult that synergizes super well with the Tesla Dome or with some of the other ults coming out of Team Professors, but definitely going to be a safe laning phase and a way for him to be able to get some stacks up. Uh, we also saw the Crunch coming out of Team Faded. Uh, that is widely regarded as a lane counter for Severog currently. A little bit later in the game, the Severog still does start to pull away once he starts to get up towards that 90 stack spot, which we can expect to see Mr. Goro get too quickly with his proficiency on this champion. He's got a lot of hours in on the guy. So definitely excited to see how Team Faded is going to be able to answer this and rather or not, they're going to be able to win through their laning phases. Yeah, the the crunch versus Sephiroth matchups, what you love to see. Once again, the brackets. Uh, this is, of course, still the quarterfinals. One more win for Professors. They're going to put themselves in the semifinals spot, potentially versus our slimes but there is an option that vanguard will still be pushing it back uh on the other side still we have no results that we uh, have seen just yet but uh, as soon as we get those in and we can show them on the bracket we'll obviously let you know yes that side of the bracket should actually be getting underway right now or within the next couple of minutes so it shouldn't be too long and we'll start having some of those answers for you guys as well. I know we got a lot of Team TOS fans out there waiting to see how they do against Rat Christ Gaming and if they're going to be able to watch them in the semifinals or not. Stay tuned to find out. Yeah, uh, but for now, you can only have to stay tuned for a couple of seconds as we roll, roll into this next game. And of course, we're going to have Team Faded once again, showing us their wonderful POVs, getting them on the light side this time around. Uh, I believe that's where they were last time as well. So nothing new in that uh, department. Nope. And we do see that we were correct in our prediction. That is a Grux in the jungle, putting it on sneaks, getting a uh, dabble on it to the crunch. Uh, like I said, just a traditional lane counter in the early part for the Severog there, trying to do what they can to slow down those stacks from coming. Yeah, it is always also worth noting that so many builds are potentially viable, but what you can do in your solo queue games is very different from what these teams are able to pull off and how they're able to counter uh, certain sort of wacky strategies that are coming out. Because, you know, if you play as a team and if you know what's coming and if you know how to play against it, becomes a lot easier to deal with the what we call the cheesy side of things. Ooh, I really like that we're on Moomoo's for this. Uh, Moomoo's does a little bit of a thing with his jungler that we don't necessarily see, especially not in our solo queue play, but sometimes not even in some of our more competitive ones here. It looks like he is going to do it for us here. I have never played a game with Moo where he did not do this, but he will be leashing this red buff for his jungler, trying to get him through his first clear early. A lot of times he even comes back to the two camp and will drop a Q on that as well. Uh, so, yep, there is the rock. Going to help that uh, Grux get through that red buff a little bit quicker. Look for him to turn back around the, like, one minute, 55 second mark, maybe a little bit after that, depending on what camp Sneaks decides to go to to leash this two buff as well. Yeah, he's now going to look, obviously, to also get a couple of his own minion clears going. Doesn't want to fall too far behind on the CS. Uh, and, of course, you know, make sure that you are uh, keeping your vision, keeping your lane protected on the mid lane especially if everything rotates through the mid lane you got to make sure that that particular part is as safe as it can be for your team to move through yeah and we saw these picks mirrored the opposite direction in the last game with Moomoo's on the gadget soul reaper on the gideon uh they swapped it it'll be interesting to see if it continues to go in the gideon's favor or if soul reaper is going to be able to pull ahead on the gadget as well as the gideon today now, it did feel like the assists that came out from Professors last time around from the jungler uh, were a little bit more effective for the side of the Professors, which uh, contributed a lot to the Gideon's early lead, or uh, at least pull away from the, from the gadget. So if that continues, then potentially, yeah, the Gideon's gonna, or the gadget's gonna have still a really good start to this game. But it does look like there's a little bit of an XP lead currently going on for, uh, for Mumu. 
Yeah, getting that little bit of early advantage. It is right around the three minute mark. So the, fa or the river buffs will be spawning pretty soon here. It looks like Professors is just going to, you know, step on a couple of those traps, make it so that they're a little bit safer to walk around lane. Great skin choice here by Z. He, as he's going to get hooked. Oh, he's going to get silenced as well, but is able to blink out. Nah, the rad Not rounds enough. are going to get him. Put him on the board. That's first blood for Survivor. Dabo's going to come over here too, but he needs to be careful. He's going to walk into old Rusty. Get slowed up there by that boomerang on the Drongo. I know our yeah. good friend Mycology, who will be calling our finals today, loves seeing the stinky Drongo fix <laughs> out there. Loves seeing him do well. So I know Mycology is smiling through his Nuzlocke right now. Yeah, he's gonna be uh, gonna be very much enjoying that. Then she later on as well, uh, checking your river buff, seeing that it's already been taken. That's an oof, and it does seem like those uh, those jungle rotations coming out for um, professors are much more sort of centered around that mid lane, around those river buffs, uh, around. Is the place where you want to be, and Grux wasn't even close to trying to help out the, their Gideon. Uh, you're definitely right about that. I know that I have mentioned a couple of times that Survivor and Crazy Fool are really the lane that they want to try to play through and stuff, but that by no means means that Soul Reaper and Mr. Go Guru are slouches. Very, very strong players uh, there as well, which gives IDOC a lot of different flexibility to kind of move into whatever lane that he's looking for to try to help because he knows he's got a superstar in every lane yeah very very and that's that's you know that's what you want to know you want to know if you can move forward and currently because you know that the Severog is going to be pushed back a little bit there isn't there is a lot of merits to potentially gank this duo this uh, the solo lane it's going to be under a lot of pressure again of course we talked you talked about it before saying well yeah the crunch is pretty much like the lane opposite of the Severog going to be uh, doing very well against that. And Guru is just going to have to play it safe, play around uh, getting his stacks up and uh, not falling too far behind in CS and XP. Yeah, that does. I mean, that does. that is what Severog's like, though. They like being able to just kind of chill in lane, sit there, pick up whatever yeah. they can and experience, and just they're okay with a game going 35, 40 minutes because they know at that point that they're the strongest champion on the map. There we go. And we have the quick, early, early Fang Tooth coming out. Five minutes and 17 seconds. This thing has only been alive for 17 seconds, and they're already trying to put it back into the respawn timer. Aedok was looking, but he's like, you know what? I, I'm not bothered by this. I'm not, I'm not even going to bother. You know, I'm just going to let him have it. Uh, yeah, fair smart enough. play. Knows it is a suicide to go and trade that potential hunt 50-50 for the Fang Tooth, as the rest of his team was not in position to be able to rotate there. Um, as we said before, you can definitely expect to see some teams not necessarily prioritize those first or second fang teeth because of the fact that it is no longer stacking up to the point that you get your fourth, fifth, or sixth fang tooth with the ch changes with Primordial Fang coming out. A primordial Fang, not the one you wanna <laughs> you wanna miss out on. Didn't really oh, see it what a hook that relevant through the last game, but yeah, a good hook from Crazy Fool indeed. Not really a lot of follow-up from it. Uh, it wasn't quite necessary just yet. And with all the minions being in the way as well, like look at all those white minions. You don't want to just run through, take all that minion damage while you're trying to get the, uh, a crunch out of the way. Yeah, going to keep Dabble safe right now. Uh, minions are quite the ally to have on your side, especially when you are into this 1v2. As once again, we see the lane swap coming out of Team Faded here. Trying to get that advantage on Zihi and on the corpse. Try to get him scaled up to the point that this Murdoch becomes a dinosaur, a T-Rex dinosaur that's going to be able to eat the enemy. Yeah, with that skin, very apt analogy, as we uh, as we <laughs> call that. Uh, that being said, though, Guru already on level, level 6, still waiting. The lane swap does seem to be slowly coming through for the professors as well. They're just waiting for the gold buff to uh, to arrive. They'll be taking that and then probably swapping themselves. That's a good pressure forward from the crunch, though. Doesn't want to let them be too comfortable in the lane swap. Otherwise, they might lose a tower for it. And that's the timing that it is. If you initiate that lane swap, you usually get the advantage. Now they're going to go for the mini prime already. I mean, Very why good not? ward there by uh, professors. They've got that in the back of the pit, so they know that they're on this. They've got it scouted out. We, we can look to see a team fight here as uh, ultimates are online for most of the professors. Not quite four sneaks here on the Grux. So no warlords, no big uh, smite there to get it. And it does look like professors is going to be able to pick up the mini prime here. Don't see anybody glowing purple. So it does look like IDOC was taken down after getting the hunt kill off. 
so no buff going to go around, but uh, Professors is going to pick up another kill. That's going to be a two for zero and the mini prime buff over to them. A great turnaround by Professors. Uh, this is going to be a quick pickup on the Murdoch as well. Don't think anyone's going to be uh, going down to this. No, that's just going to be another pick off. And once again, you know, we talk about we talk about it a lot, like the choice to go after the objectives. They might have taken the Fang Tooth, but they're not going to let the Mini Prime just sit there and uh, be taken by Team Faded. Professor's oh, just no. uh, putting that up on the shelf. Yeah, way too big of an objective to just sit there and passively let them do it. Great map awareness to realize that they were posturing that direction after getting a small advantage in the mid lane. They know that they have to make those rotations and get over there or they're going to give that prime buff up. Just really, really good job reading the map there by Professor's. I think Faded might have wanted to go for that a little bit sooner. Like that might be a very big part of why they do the lane swap in the first place. Uh, but because they waited like a like 20, 30 extra seconds, they didn't have the opportunity to to rotate onto the mini, the mini prime with the numbers advantage. And the dual lane of professors was able to rotate or go back to spawn and then rotate into mini prime on time. Otherwise, that timing is perfect. You might have actually been able to take it just by sheer volume of players being around. So we did see that Mumus has got that Alchemal Rod finished up. He is working towards that true silver bracelet from what we can see in his build path right now, trying to get that online, get that CC immunity and that damage that comes out when the shield pops after using his ultimate. They need big black holes coming out of Mumus here. If they're going to look to turn any of these team fights and uh, Gideon definitely has the ultimate that you need in order to turn one. Nice little sidestep here by uh by dibble dabble in order to get away from that crazy fool hook as they have yeah, moved him back over into the off lane it looks like i love seeing the crunch just uh being swapped back to his own lane being able to defend this tower and currently a dual lane is actually doing a number on the dual lane tower from uh, team faded uh mr goro was able to get the subjugate the down there in the tower which is uh gonna get a little oh. bit of the health pool of corpse taken out but he is that narbash he's got that healing but idok is gonna come get on azihi they're gonna miss the follow-up as well good blink to avoid the steel or the shield bash and sneaks has came in turns it into a 3v2 but they're able to get away from the pole what a juke there by the professors it's what i like about the way the professors play they almost always play in a way that they will have their movement abilities back up they'll have their blinks ready so even if they get turned on, they still have that safety net. It's uh, it's something that is still a discussion sometimes in the predecessor community. Like, is that blink a good a good thing that it exists? Because uh, it does create these situations where, oh, you get turned on, I'll just blink away. Uh, but on the other hand, the enemy team has the same opportunity to do so, and Faded isn't really capitalizing on that same uh, issue a lot of the time. Fangtooth mm -hmm. now will be under attack. They're going for the second one, but this time Crazy Fool is welcome to the pit. There's El Idok. They're looking for potentially the steal. The smite is ready, but they will take it. No steal this time around. And now the team fight will ensue. But look at those health bars going super low. Team Faded is getting blown up at the moment. One, two, three, and that's going to be number four. They do get one back, but that is really not what you want to see if you're Faded. Yeah, a little bit of a slow rotation there. They had poked out the enemy of professors there they had a little bit of a change but it took them about five to ten seconds to rotate over to that thing tooth bit they really wanted to get in there early burst it try to get out before professors could answer just not quite quick enough to escape with their lives as well are going to pick up that out of combat movement speed though getting to that second thing tooth so mm -hmm. going to be able to rotate around the map a little bit quicker hopefully be able to match what idoc is doing and where idoc has been on the map as that man has been an absolute terror four team faded this entire series so far he, he's not been connecting on uh, on a lot of the abilities though and i think that's a really big thing to note as well like even though um they are making making good rotations it has often been more of a threat rather than a actual you know terror so to speak uh especially that bull rush going wide a lot of the time even when they were in the uh, mini prime pit so as soon as uh, they start connecting with those, it becomes an absolute menace and a real big problem to deal with. But as of yet, it's still just a, uh, a mild inconvenience all the time. Ooh, the Thunk is going to land over here on the Goro, but he is still going to have the Slither in order to so take away over here. And yeah, and so tanky at this point in the game. He At 12 minutes and 30 seconds, he's easily got his 60 stacks right there. As you can see, that first or that second upgrade to his shoulders there. Uh, really, really good farming so far on Goro. 
even in a lane where he is supposedly countered. Uh, this man is just doing a good job of getting the farming in that he needs. Constant thunking as well, and like, it's a big part of why the lane swap happens, because of course, Murdoch able to still put pressure on the tower being a ranged unit. Crunch cannot really do that. So as soon as he's pushed into that tower and uh, uh, Severox kind of just sitting there, there's almost forced to rotate in order to get that going. Good Tesla dome, but also a good black hole. The stasis is brilliant here from the gadget. Will not get out with their lives, but it does mean they get a trade off within that mid lane. Still just blinking out. I duck completely safe. There's going to be a little bit of damage on that tower really soon because of uh, the missing gadget. So that's at least a win on the mid lane. And with them rotating their duo lane over to the off lane, that puts them close to that prime, which the mini prime is about to be respawning Almost soon. Up. So look for them to try to make that play as Dibble Dabble is just respawning and back on the map. Going to get a reset out of Z here, but definitely look for them to put that pressure towards that mini prime uh, right now. Or as fast as they can. Actually, Professors may have the inside track, and they may be the ones to start this mini prime here. Team Fader needs to go over and get a ward on that. Get some ideas of where they are, as all five members are not in vision right now for Professors. Oh, two of them are going to pop up over into the off lane. It looks like the Sevrog was still there, and the enemy killed, uh, enemy team kills the mini prime. While they're all hidden in the vision, Team Fade didn't have the wards out there to be able to scout that out. I'm sure that they had uh, the intuition in their brains to know that they were there, but not quite sure about it as Mr. Goro was showing in right lane as well. And they're just going to walk through the tower. Oh, that's not great for Sneaks with that much follow up there. All four or four members of the team over here in the off lane. That's going to secure that first tower over there uh, into the off lane for professors there, evening up the tower score. It looks like as Team Faded is going to answer over in the left lane with Moomoose and Dibble Dabble over there split pushing. Yeah, I've seen a very quiet game from the from the Grux so far on the side of Team Faded. They need to get a little bit more value out of that. It always seems there's just this one member that cannot get on the map at all. And uh, this time around, it seems to be the Grux, the jungle, not working out the way they want it to. Uh, still good split push coming out from Dibble Dabble and uh, the mid laner as well. Uh, they are going to be able to get that tier 2 uh, pretty much guaranteed. Yep, there it is. But they are going to get pushed back here on the solo lane and lose the tier 2 there. Yeah, decent job by Team Faded doing what they can to trade this back. I don't necessarily... Okay, it does look like they got the Tier 2 themselves as well. So, yep. so far on this Mini Prime, they are trading even in objectives, but they are looking for the 15-minute inhib here. Good Black Hole is going to come out of Mumus, but they're going to be able to interrupt it. It looks like Crazy Fool got away with three or four health left in his health bar there. Still not quite falling down, even after the Crash Bang Boom is going to come out of Narbash. Really, really good job of surviving that by Crazy Fools. And big trouble for Team Faded right now, as it is just Grux and Narbash up against a big, big push coming uh, out of Team inhib. Faded here. Yeah, he's the not going to be able to stop down. it. That's going to be right side inhibitor at, fifth, at 16, 16. Yeah. minutes. <laughs> wow, that may be one of the earliest inhibitors I've seen in a competitive game. Definitely the earliest I've seen in a competitive game of Predecessor. Really, really great idea there by Professors. Oh, no. Knowing the advantage they have and really taking that in. Valiant effort oh, by Sneaks there. Really using his kit to the win. best of his ability. But like, even, Severog... even got the river buff. The river buff was huge. Like almost turned a fight around, but eventually at Sephiroth, yeah, like the smack back, yeah. it was just a little bit too much. Uh, but, you know, like one or, one or extra two sub items just changed it around as well. It was a very close engage. Yeah, and I mean, that Severog is already big, huge, 16 minutes into the game. Maybe not necessarily huge, but definitely getting those stacks put up onto himself. I'm sure if he's not at 90 yet, he is creeping very close to it at this point. Usually people like to be at 120 around that 20, 21 minute mark. And yeah, the enemy team is going to pick up Fangtooth as well. So all three of the original Fangtooth have fallen. The next one that spawns will be the Primordial one. And that's going to be a huge advantage to whatever team is going to be able to do that. Yeah, One thing I do want to point out that doesn't make it completely terrible and a huge loss for Team Faded, I have spoken to Moomoose a couple of times, and he is kind of a fan of the idea of letting a very early inhibitor fall because what that does is it puts super minions in that lane, and that lane is constantly going to be pushing towards you to a spot yeah. where you can farm it safely. Those super minions give a lot more experience and a little bit more gold. So a great way to try to funnel some experience and some extra gold into a character that they think 
it's good on potentially but it, it does come with that downside of the turret not being able to shoot for the rest of the game once it does respawn here and it looks like mumus is the one picking up that extra experience from the super minions uh, meanwhile though on the other side of the map in the dual lane there is just an instant elimination on the corpse hook in no chance whatsoever to survive that and uh with a 4v5 on the map they're not going to push the inhibitor quite yet but there's so much pressure here yeah and uh mr goro here has set uh has mumu's occupied not going to be able to get back and help his team but he needs to be careful as this gideon is starting to get a little bit of the advantage but as they walk into melee late range that advantage starts to swap he's able to get the slither doesn't have his e-portal but is able to get it up that's a solo kill for my boy mumu's Ooh, and a, a great thunk much. in the tower gonna use the pacifier to dodge out of the shield smash a really good little bit of an advantage here for team faded being up uh one member on the map right now as the uh three people are dead four professors but survivor is a big boy he is not afraid to just sit here and continue to hit this mumus is going to come up try to help corpse the thunk is going to land as well survivor's a little overextended here stays a little bit too long and team faded does seem to pick him up there big buy is going to be coming out of zehi right now you see he's got 2900 gold on your screen there as a beautiful amount of gold to buy to start buying with and it kind of felt like professors were sort of feeling testing the water be like can we take this fight or how much how much stronger are we than, than them at this stage of the game uh and the answer is well they're stronger but not that much stronger like it's not a complete white uh, wash and of course winning that uh, solo on the right side a little bit of help from the murdoch uh was a was a pretty big uh, pretty big moment as well to get the seven rock down that yeah, being said he... though it's objective time. The or prime is going to be up in about 20 seconds. I don't think they're going to instantly go for it. Like we said already, you need to have a pretty big lead to be pretty confident you're going to take it. Uh, but we've seen Team Faded be a little overconfident sometimes and just play so aggressive that they're going for their objectives. Yeah, they at least need to have some vision out on that. It would not be uh, surprising to me if the professors do decide to try to start that. Probably not as we see Mr. Goro over there on the left side of the map. That's a pretty long roam for him to join the team fight almost to the mid lane right now. So it does look like they're trying to group around the objectives that are still available on the map for them. Yeah, and here is Mr. Goro. They are moving their way towards the uh, the prime. And yeah, uh, professors are on it. They need to move over here, get their eyes off of Mr. Goro, get into that prime pit because that's where the real professors are at. And that's also where they're going to be taking a lot of damage from that uh, Prime Guardian itself. They will actually get the Ore Prime, but I don't think Mr. Goro will be able to use that buff for long. They'll go down instantly. And that makes it a 5v4 without a lot of tankiness in the way. Beautiful black Big hole. Black hole for Mumu. It's amazing. We'll get a double, a triple kill out of that. Will the Murdoch, that's huge, picking up the carry. And uh, they're going to try and chase Dude. down Survivor. We'll be able to get that as well. No problem. Be Full team wipe. Easy. Team wipe from them. So they need to get into a lane, try to en or even up this inhibitor score, try to get one of those down, get whatever pressure they can, set themselves up so that Professors needs to stay in their base as Primordial Fang will be spawning for Team Faded in about one minute now. Got to try to keep this pressure up, keep uh, Professors on the wrong side of the map so you're able to capitalize and take that next big objective. Great, great swing for Team Faded here. Something we've seen in a lot of these fights. One team gets an objective, the other team comes in and sweeps them all up. A uh, really been a theme of this series so far as we saw professors do that earlier in the opposite direction. Two team faded after getting that second thing too. And now that we're looking obviously at a uh, at a moment where these teams have sort of equalized after that, I mean you had just picked up the ore prime, you instantly lose it again uh, due to a full team wipe. There is a very good opportunity that this Primal Fang Tooth is going to be, uh, well, uh, not just opportunity, it's just going to be the next target, the next objective, and they are yes, moving towards it. And Z is going to be absolutely huge. We highlighted uh, just about a minute ago that he had 2,800 gold that he was about to buy with. Well, he just based with 3,500. Uh, Z is going to be pretty close to full, not necessarily full build, but three, getting close to his fourth item at this point in the map. Uh, but it does look like Team Faded is a little slow on this, and... Yeah, Professors is going to pick up the completely uncontested Primal Fang. Yeah, plus, of course, their second Fang Tooth buff. That's going to be temporary, but it's still going to be a, a great one to work with. Yep, going to get that 8% out of combat movement speed. Uh, even the race up as far as the rotations and their ability to move from space to space. 
a great four professors there. Also just going to do uh, copious amounts of damage if they are able to get any damage locked down onto Team Faded. That burn, all of those different additions, that Primal Fang is providing for t uh, the professors right now is going to have a huge impact. Watch Team Faded look to try to stall this out if possible. Now, Team Faded going uh, straight back into it. Straight back into the momentum. They've been uh, known to split push quite a fair bit in the uh, previous game and also in this game a little bit. Did a lot of damage already on that middle inhi inhibitor. And they're now going to try and push out their right lane. Because, of course, their inhibitor is not going to be able to shoot anymore. The super minions aren't going to be up. So you can't use it as, a, as an XP and gold farm. Going to have to... Uh, Get into a position where you can fight and look at that 16 Gide on the Gideon already versus Severok still on 15. Love to see it. High level, uh, high levels, a lot of XP on your mid laner. Yeah, definitely looking to win through Zhi and through Mumus here. Zhi is eight and four, getting to the point that he is a big hungry dinosaur over here on the Murdoch. It does look like Idok is looking for a little bit of a flank, but Mumus is going to spot him out over there, standing near the red buff. Looking to pressure this mid-tier two is the Professor's. Not a whole lot of answers, especially if we're going to get the great hook out of Crazy Pool there to pick Mumu's off, which is going to secure that tier two into the mid lane. And Professor's needs to get, or not Professor's, excuse me, Team Fade needs to get their, their members over here as their mid lane uh, turret is going to fall. They are outnumbered here. It is a 3v5 in this mid lane, it looks like. We'll be 4v5 now. Yeah, 4v5 now that corpse is back. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. we've got Crunch. Well, now it's a 3v5 because now Crunch, Crunch is down. Yeah. <laughs> Crunch and Gideon being down. Uh, going to make it hard for Team Faded to contest this. The Bull Rush is going to land onto Idoc. He's going to take a stun of himself, but then he's going to get that big shield bash off the top rope. That's going to pick up Zihi. Uh, with Zihi and Mumus back in the base, not a lot of wave clear ability for team faded here as professors is going to move over pick up that inhibitor that isn't shooting right now they're going to have two inhibitors down on team in team faded space and they're looking to push and end this Let's game soon, potentially mumus gets a little here. aggressive there he will he just respawns so he's got the ultimate up the black hole does get cancelled but you get an instant stun up as well full focus onto that drongo get him out of the fight get him out of his life points there is the black hole that you wanted to see beautifully set up we'll get the drongo we'll get their lives for it to get that adc out of the way is always a big uh, big boon to you crazy fool now in a bit of trouble will be stunned up crunched up into mulch and the soul reaper yeah, you can stick around here, but you're also going to fall. Big uh, trades here, back and forth between the two teams. But Team Faded's going to be happy that they don't have to worry about protecting their core for a little bit. Yeah, and Zihi is back up, so here comes the big damage. Uh, Mr. Goro is smart to blink away there, as Zihi was going to be able to pursue him. Uh, he does have that Lightning Hawk, so a little bit of extra movement speed to him. I believe that that provides three, but really good build coming out of him here. He's got the Imperator, he's got Sky Splitter, he's got Lightning Hawk. Working on that fourth item right now. Already has that big 1200 sword. Really, really pumping a lot of damage out. You saw 506 damage to the minions there as he's auto-attacking them. Just uh, just pew-pewing damage out of that gun there for Murdoch. Uh, who needs levels when you've got big damage, right? That's all you're looking for out of your Murdoch. Yeah, of course, it helps to upgrade your abilities a little bit more. That long arm, the law could use the extra upgrade. But in general, Murdoch is happy to just upgrade the Buckshot and the long arm, arm of the law. And the other two abilities will sort of do what they do uh, when you need them. Other than that, it's all about that gold farm. All about getting that damage and the items up. And, uh, well, they've been doing a decent job at that. Level 14... Got a bunch of items going, closing in on the complete build. So is uh, Mumu's here. Looking for the next Orb engagement. Prime is back up. It yeah, is they're definitely looking timer. for it. Same for uh, Primal Fangtooth, though. That one's about to respawn in about 15 seconds. So this is going to be a very interesting choice how you're going to split that. You can't really take Primal Fangtooth anymore alone as a jungler a lot of the time. Like, it's a very damaging uh, NPC now. Yes, it also has 1,600 health, which takes just a long time for somebody to burst down. Some of the ADCs yeah. can do it if they've got a little bit of lifesteal, but it is not a quick ordeal by any means. This is probably going to be the team fight that decides this game if they don't just completely wipe each other or diminish each other's numbers too much. But look, uh, look out for it here because this is where the action is going to start for us here. That's just be a, a quick... trying to pull in. Just, just... pulling in. Walking away, <laughs> just poking. 
All okay. right. Yeah, so it they started. have started it. Murdoch, Grux, and Narbash are in on this. Uh, Professors is going to try to get the counter engage onto them, but they're not quite yet into the pit. Great zone. Black hole the zone. Hole and they get the prime. Moose there. They get the prime. They're going to get the no kills quite yet. Tesla Dome Steel's is going to go come down out. soon. Right? How is Elduck still alive? How is Iduck still alive? He was 1 HP in that pit, still lives, and everyone else falls. That's ridiculous. Uh, that so they Steel are able to get the gone. prime, but they almost get wiped as only Mumus is they up and wiped. Gadget is going to pursue him. Iduck, or not Iduck, I'm sorry. Soul Reaper should be able to get another hat on Doom. Yeah, that's going to be yep, the Gideon going go. down. That's a full team wipe for Professors. That will probably be game two and the series for Professors as we do see them pushing in to that there. Quick little update while we are core. on this. Slime Temps has defeated Vanguardian in our other quarterfinals matchup. So if Professors is able to take this game two right here, we will see Professors. We will see Slime Temps in the semifinals for a chance to play for the championship of Agora. That core is going down. That game is over. And they're indeed going to be their opponents Aww. in the semifinals. Yeah, we missed the end of the game almost <laughs> because of that. Now, amazing. Well done for the professors recognizing once again their win condition. But there was a, very, a lot of very smart and very optimal movements coming out from Team Faded. Just a couple of timing issues. Like that first swap first lane swap that they did was very good but then they didn't move onto the mini prime until like 20 30 seconds later by that time the entirety of the professors had already regrouped and was over on their way into that objective so team faded just a couple of timing issues to clean up this could be a very different series honestly that game was wild it felt like yeah. every time a team got an objective they lost a fight in the map with the opposite direction for them we had the, the second fake tooth where uh team Fader was able to get it but then almost get completely wiped we had that one at the end we had the mini prime fight as well really really interesting to see the team that got the objectives take the disadvantage after all of those definitely not your traditional game wonderful performance out of Team Faded there. We want to make sure we give the opportunity to thank them for participating with us today and for all the help that every team and all of these teams have put in in order to make this successful for us today as we will see the professors move in to round two, taking on Slime Stamp. Yeah, Slime Stamp also picking up the 2-0 win in their series. Uh, so, you know, next time we look at the bracket, we're going to see those few two wonderful two O's. Of course, the other side of the bracket, the quarterfinals there have also started. Fortunately, we cannot show every single game on stream because then we just would be going for, like we said, way too long. That's not, not fun for anybody. That being said, this is currently the bracket. Of course, the ones are supposed to be twos at this stage for both the professors and Slime Temp. But uh, those are going to be updated as soon as we can. Uh, that means we are going to be moving into the semifinals right now, Lance. Yeah, that's right. We will be broadcasting the semifinals. We are going to start with Team Faded versus Slime Temps um, as the quarterfinals are still wrapping up over here on the other side of the bracket. This should be an absolute banger. If you don't know anything about Slime Temps, they've got some really recognizable names within the predecessor community. They've got Seismic on their team. They've got Six on their team. They've got a whole bunch of very strong players. Uh, over there they had a really really impressive performance in our group stage being able to take the fifth the fifth seed as team immune was able to just eke them out there in the grand finals of it all a uh, really really impressive performance out of them leading up to that match with immune though uh this should be a very very tight matchup uh, these guys know each other pretty well as well um, once you get to the point that you're kind of at this higher echelon of players, a lot of these people get pretty friendly with each other as they run into each other in solo queue all of the time. So definitely going to be a nice, friendly match amongst these two teams. Friendly but competitive is what we like to see. So before we get to that, obviously, we're going to go through a quick break. Make sure you get your snacks and your hydration ready because you're not going to be able to get off of your seats anytime soon. <laughs> 